Okay, so moving on now, um, I'm just going to show the first kind of concepts of uh, getting a sale and then posting just the sale uh, header information in. And then in the next video, we'll talk about sending in the sale stages as you uh, put an order in and a pick and a pack and so on. So uh, on the left hand side here, I've just got Postman. Uh, a couple of important notes here. I I'm not a developer. Um, I know the API code and I know what goes where in Deer and, and what needs to be where in the API code, but I'm not a developer so you can obviously use this as you wish if you've got uh, your own server-side application running and firing things into Deer, that's fine uh, however you want to run that side most commonly people are looking at the API if they've got third-party warehouses or third-party like ordering channels or similar I'm just gonna use Postman because it's the easiest to, to give you an example with um, so first thing to note is there's the Deer API documentation that's here that gives you basically everything I'm gonna t say in more technical detail so every field whether it's required or not uh, if there's any conditions on the format of fields and and things like that um, in the front end for a moment uh, if you have access to the front end of deer depending if, if you're if you're a user or if you've been given user access um, you can go into integration my integrations um, and if the api is already set up you'll see api here uh, if you don't you can click here click in here and then add a new api connection um, so under the setup tab here, um, there's an API uh, ID and a key. I'm not going to show those just for security reasons, uh, but that's where you get the uh, information that needs to be in the header of any um, calls that you make. So over here, you can see I've got some he some standard headers that come in Postman, and I've also added a couple. I won't go into that again for security. Um, there is a log in here, so if you're sending or receiving information, you can check here and test this information. So if you fire something into the API and you want to see whether it worked, obviously in Postman you'll get a response, whether it's a success or failure, uh, but you can always double check here if you need to. And then the API Explorer is particularly useful for um, just checking calls. So as an example, um, if I wanted to uh, so let's say I wanted to get a sale. So the, the, the sale get just has a search of the ID. So if I just go and grab an ID for a moment, uh, place that in here, and you'll see this gives me uh, the sale information, but also quite nicely gives me the exact request that I need to make. Now, this is obviously a simple request. It's just standard API call slash sale and then the ID. Um, for reference sake, uh, again, if you've got front end access, uh, if you go into sales and go and look up a sale, the ID just sits up here in the URL. Um, now, if you're doing some other calls, like uh, a sale or sale list, for example, um, you've got a myriad more search criteria. So this is where it can be particularly useful to try things in the front end first to then be able to see nicely and easily what the call should be that you've got to make. So if, for example, I only want authorized orders um, updated since the 1st of February, um, uh, let's just leave it at that for the moment, then I get this exact call here uh, with everything in the correct format, like the date in the required format and, and similar. So that's the exact call I then need to make. And just to show you really simply, if I just jump over here and just get this, um, you'll see that this then puts the parameters in. Obviously I could, again, this is not a deer thing, this is a postman thing. I could have just put the parameters in here anyway, and that would have created the call for me. But um, if I send this, providing you've got the ID and the key correctly, uh, I have none oh, because it's a test system and there's probably none since that point. Let me just see. There we go. If I take the um, order status off, there's then a bunch more here. Now, in general, so when you get a list view, uh, you get just very basic information. So you've got a, a sale ID, uh, you've got a customer ID, um, and you've got some overarching information basically that is there for the purposes of being able to search and filter so that you can say get me all the sales from the Melbourne warehouse or that have changed since this date maybe the last date you polled for information um, that's the aim of the list view 
Then the idea is you drill down to each sale ID if you're wanting to get sales information out rather than post it in. Um, you drill down to each sale ID um, and you perform a get on that sale to get more information. So if we take, for example, um, let's just see. So this one is actually credited, so this is this will be quite an old one. But I'll just take this sale ID um, and then I'll show you here. Uh, so if I then get the sale rather than the sale list, pop that ID in and execute. You'll see I then get a huge long return with all basically everything in all those tabs I showed in the first video. So we've got all of the order lines, fulfillment lines, uh, warehouse information, invoicing, payments, credits, everything to do with this order. In this case, it's going to be about six, seven hundred lines. Yeah, six forty six lines. Um, just to show you as well, if I just take this request and chuck it over here. Just to prove the concept, if I do that same request uh, over here in Postman, I'll get exactly the same information back with all the sale uh, information as well. So if you're getting sales from the system, firstly, you might want to get a sale list if you need to filter that or similar, um, or search for sales, search by a reference number or similar. Um, otherwise, failing that, you um, can get individual sale orders with the ID there. Now, that's getting you a huge amount of information because, cancel that for a moment. Let's retry that for a minute. Interesting. Um, check in a moment while it's not running through. Um, so that will get me all of the key sale information. Now this goes back to the first concept in the earlier video, um, if you haven't watched that. Thank you, I returned it. Um, which is those tabs, order, pick, pack, ship, fulfillment. So within this call, uh, or within this response I should say, uh, there's a bunch of arrays here. So in order, we've got the order lines, and then we've got first order line, second order line, and then as we go down, we've got the fulfillments, and we've got the pick section, we've got the pack section, we've got the ship station, all of that arrayed together. Um, so if you also want to call one part of that, so if you only care about the order and the order lines, obviously you don't want a 700 line return with invoice information, payments, all that bump, um, you can just call the particular area. So if I call the sale order, um, and let's just grab the same string, and you'll see this just returns that key information. If we look over the left-hand side here, which still has the full sale call, uh, you'll see here there are some subtle differences, like the sale ID is at the top because that's at the top of the whole call in Postman. But you'll see the lines, the information, the quantities, the price, the discount, and so on. It pretty much is exactly the same. Some information not in the order lines call, just around custom fields and things, but. Broadly, this is the order section of the particular sale. Uh, honestly, it, it's your. It depends on your process and the dear client's process whether you call the whole sale and get all of that information and store it, or just call the order, the pick, the pack, the ship, and so on. Um, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of getting orders out of the system. Um, and getting information out. Uh, I'll talk in the next little video about posting information in and, and the various stages and steps.